So you already heard my name is Obra Djordjevic uh, and I decided to uh, give a short introduction into my research that I di did as a PhD student in last three years at John Moores University. Uh, so I decided to speak about three-phase grid and how things can be overcome and extended with the new technology. So uh, what I'm talking about is that the mains does not necessarily in the future will look like this, but why not to have more than three phases. So here is the contents of uh, my presentation. First I will uh, say something about the history of the grid, then something about devices that are in use to, let's say, uh, extend uh, some problems and to convert from DC again to AC current. Uh, tell a few words about benefits of multi-phase system of multi-level inverters. Uh, tell something about my research that I did at John Moores University. Show some results and give some conclusions. So the history of three-phase grid started actually with the war at the end of uh, 19th century and it was well known as a war of current. It was the war between DC and AC current or say war between uh, two scientists, Thomas Edison on top and Nikola Tesla on bottom. Uh, so Thomas Edison was more uh, was scientist, but he also had his company. So uh, partly his interest was to uh, do electrification with DC current. But he had some problems in that time because he couldn't transfer DC current to longer distances. And let's say that in that war, Nikola Tesla won the battle. Uh, so from that time, let's say that uh, the grid started uh, spreading around the countries. And what we have in a mains is alternating current and the voltage that looks like this. Uh, and it is interesting how the standards have been set. So, for example, how the voltage has been chosen to be 220 volts, as we know, and why the frequency, why this shape repeats 50 times in a second. So I thought that it would be like interesting introduction. And who is the most responsible for these standards? Because all of us know that one standard is in Europe and let's say the rest of the world, and the other is in USA. Uh, so the most re responsible company in Europe was AEG, German company, while in USA it was Westinghouse Electric and Nikola Tesla was working for Westinghouse company. So for uh, the frequency that we know is 50 or 60 hertz in US, uh, it was the compromise, that frequency for different parts of the grid, of the system. So for example, for generators, uh, that are mechanical, the frequency should be lower uh, because of mechanical damages that are possible. For example, for transformers that are responsible uh, for actually long distance transmission and that boost the voltage to high values by reducing the current and in that way uh, enabling uh, long distance transmission, they actually have requirements of high frequency because the dimensions can be reduced in that way. Uh, transmission lines by itself, they prefer low frequency. Uh, and maybe the logical question is why then we didn't do with DC current transmission. But in that time it was a problem because we cannot easily play with DC voltage. We cannot boost it to high values by reducing current, because we know that the power that we are transmitting is equal to product of the voltage and the current. So nowadays it is possible, and maybe some of you heard for uh, high voltage DC links uh, that are better for long distance transmissions than current uh, alternating grid. Uh, the lightning and motors were the main uh, loads and are uh, uh, today. And for example, lightning was one of the main reasons why the frequency was set to 50 Hertz. For example, first standard in Germany 
uh, that was set by AEG company was 40 Hertz. But they saw that lights were flickering, so they decided to increase because human eyes uh, has, uh, can detect up to 25, 30 Hertz frequency. Uh, so they increased the frequency to 50 Hertz. Uh, on the other hand, in USA, Westinghouse actually realized that uh, more optimal frequency for some type of bulbs that he used is 60 Hertz. So that is how the frequency was set to 50 or say 60 Hertz. And how the voltage was set to 220 volts. Actually, the magnitude is a bit higher, 1.41 times higher. Uh, so it was the compromise of the thickness of the leads and the thickness of insulation. Uh, so let's say that in time when uh, the standard was set at the beginning of 20th century, the Americans were more rich, so they lowered the voltage, increasing current and increasing the thickness of the leads. So the further question is, why do we have three-phase grid? Why not one-phase, single-phase, why not two-phase? Well, the main reason comes from electrical machines, because electrical machines are the main producers and the main consumers of the energy. And in developed countries, more than 70% of produced energy is used by electric machines. Uh, and all electric machines actually need to have rotating field that will make some rotor, or let's say some magnet, whatever we put inside, spinning. Uh, so with single phase system, this is uh, not possible to do. We cannot produce rotating field. And also for single phase, we need one transmitting and one returning lead. That means two, wi two wires, two leads. Uh, if you have a look at the two phase system and let's say some two phase machine, as I illustrated here, we can obtain rotating field. So we can put two windings, uh, orthogonal each to other, and we can supply one with, let's say, voltage that looks like cosine, and the other one with voltage that looks like a sine signal. And how the field will be produced? If we have a look at the first instant of time, we'll have a voltage and the field in this <coughs> x-axis, but not this value is zero, not in a vertical. So the field be horizontal. Then further, as we move in time, we see that the maximum voltage is in vertical axis and we have zero voltage in horizontal axis, so the field will turn. And if we continue further on, we'll produce rotating field and we can spin the machine. But if we have a look at the currents in one system like this, we can see that this uh, common uh, lead uh, has actually higher current than the other two. And it practically means that we are in problem because the thickness of that lead should be higher. And anyway, for two-phase system, we need three wires. Let's have a look at the three-phase system. Uh, actually, there are no any problems that we mentioned before. System is ideally sinus, uh, symmetrical, so here are the voltages and the obtained current. So current is the same in all three phases. And it can produce rotating field without any problem. As I said, there is no any asymmetry. And even more, in neutral common uh, uh, branch, there is no current, so we can easily remove this wire from the system and that means that we obtained all our aims with minimal number of wires <coughs> and that's how the three-phase system has been set. But with the power uh, switches and with new components that we got let's say from 1990s, 20 years ago, we are able to produce practically any voltage that we want. And those devices are called inverters. So we have our grid, and grid can be easily rectified. So here we have 
roughly 600 volts and it's constant DC voltage and at the output we have two of those switches so if we want to produce let's say sinusoidal voltage but not at 50 Hertz at some other frequency because we saw from that animation that our machine was spinning at the speed that was governed by the mains so if you use the same machine in Europe or in USA it will spin it will rotate at different speed so with inverters we can solve that problem and what is the main principle of inverters how do they work actually if we want uh, to we have obviously just two voltages 600 volts or zero volts so if you want higher voltage we'll turn on higher switch if we need lower voltage we'll turn on lower switch so what actually do we do uh, at very high frequency we switch upper than lower upper and lower switch but we keep switch for a different percentage of time on so if we need 600 volts during one short period of time uh, we'll keep upper switch on. If you need 50%, we'll keep 50% upper on, 50% lower switch on. So this principle where we control the average value by the width of the pulses that we produce is called pulse width modulation. And that's the main uh, principle of operation of the inverters. So our output voltage is not ideally sinusoidal but on average this square wave line is sinusoidal or what engineers usually want to do is to look at the spectrum so here we can see that we have at desir desirable frequency low frequency we have one component but we also have some high voltage uh, high frequency components and we can say that we are in trouble but actually the inductance uh, things the different because inductance doesn't see those high frequencies and all our machines actually they have some windings and inductance inside so it's not a problem for our machine and I have shown here only one phase but why not to put more of them so here is shown one example of five phase inverter and here is how it actually looks like this is one of the inverters that we have in our laboratory so i can say that three phase is not a limit uh, and inverter actually behaves like some quasi or super grid okay but why to use more than three phases actually we have inverters today everywhere and they, they are used for controlling the speed of the machines so as I said, we can produce any sinusoidal voltage with the inverter. And it is uh, why they are in use actually, because they can save some money. For example, one investigation has shown that if in your company, for example, with 100 of uh, motors, induction motors, that, are, that were supplied from the grid, you buy inverters and uh, actually supply your machines via inverters you can pay back your money just uh, that you spend for inverters just in 2.5 years between 1 and 2.5 years uh, so three phase inverters are nowadays widely in use but what are we getting if we use more phases so multi-phase machines have by itself some advantages and some of them are that those machines are more fault tolerant that means that if we have fault in few phases as far as we have three healthy phases we can continue up our operation without any problem also we can uh, connect few multi-phase machines in series and supply them from the same inverter and also there are some examples of torque enhancement uh, in multi-phase machines but why also not to increase number of levels of the inverter so I said that I was switching just between two levels and why not to uh, find the midpoint and switch between three levels because this produced voltage looks more like sinusoidal much more similar to sinusoidal voltage than this obtained with two level inverter 
Also, if you look at the spectrum, the higher harmonics are much lower. And if we look at total harmonic distortion, that represents actually a power that is wasted through these harmonics over the power that we need of the fundamental, we see that it can twice reduce. OK, so what I did at John Moore's during my PhD, I decided to combine uh, these two topologies, multi-phase and multi-level. So uh, I got that good things of both topologies can just be combined in a good way. Uh, so what is the, let's say, disadvantage is that the system is more complex and the control of such a system is more involved. So my PhD title is Pulse Feed Modulation, that I explained the principle, Strategies for Multi-Level Multi-Phase AC Drives. So how to run one such a system? And I did investigation on five and seven phase systems and I uh, also looked at carrier-based, that is the simple principle that I tried briefly to explain, and also some other called space vectors that is much more involved. So here is one system that I used for my experiments. So with a computer and with a real-time computer, I controlled one device such as this one, inverter. And that inverter supplied this machine that is, in this case, five-phase machine. So here are some results that are uh, quite, let's say, difficult to understand. But what I want to show here is that I compared few modulation strategies. And here are some voltages and current that I measured and so on. And what I actually got is that with a simple modulation that I tried to explain, I obtained the same performance as with one complex approach called space vector. So let's try to conclude uh, this speech. Thanks to uh, switching devices that are available today, we are now able to produce grid with more than three phases. That means that now grid can be set to fit to the load. And the most common and the most important load is the machine, because it uses the most of produced energy. So multiple benefits of both multi-phase and AC systems can be combined. That is very important. But the control of such a system becomes complex. And as we saw, sometimes we can obtain it in a very simple manner. OK, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If I could just start and just ask you, um, as a non-engineer, <laughs> who yes. would be the end benefits? Who, who would see the most benefit from your research? Um, you know, once you've reached all your conclusions, would it be consumers or would it be industry? Where would the benefits of your research be most obvious? So it's definitely industry because all the time I was talking about main consumers of electric energy and uh, the most of the energy is consumed in industry yeah. by so motors. Very really big machines. So yes, exactly, exactly, yeah. yes. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Anything else? Thanks, Yes. Okay. Uh, you've talked about the grid itself. And yes. Multi-phase grid. Yes. So can you think of any potential actual multi-phase grid with multi-phase generators where this could become reality? Uh, multi-phase grid where it can become reality, for example. Well, what is important about these multi-phase grids that they are just located. Uh, so the 
let's say, the, the, the transmission to longer distances will be always done, but high voltage DC or with three phase grid, existing grid. But uh, there are some such grids, for example, in uh, uh, winding in uh, wind turbines, for example, uh, and those grids are actually local grids between, uh, let's say, turbines in some wind field. Yeah, yeah. But those grids are local grids. Okay. When you look into energy efficiency, is your model better than, than the conventional ones? Uh, well, it is difficult to say what is better. Uh, so, because uh, it depends on, on application, I, I wouldn't say that it's better efficiency. In theory, it's a better efficiency, but in theory, yeah. in practice, it's many differences. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. efficiency is more or less. Yeah. Okay. I think over the last few months, we've actually heard quite a few speakers talking about energy efficiency. We've heard about wind turbines from another speaker. I think there's obviously a lot of research going on down in the Byram Street area that will be very beneficial both industry and consumers and you to all of us really as citizens in the long run. So it's very important research and thank you very much for coming to tell us about it. Okay. Thank you.